let's turn this custom GPT image caption generator into its own web application so that we can charge customers to use it. We know there's a market for it. This custom GPT has 5,000 plus chats since its release. And what it does is it takes an image that the user uploads and then creates an Instagram caption for it with relevant hashtags. Over in your bubble application, you're gonna create a new page. This is the caption page and it needs a few elements. It has a page title called Image Caption Generator. It has a description for our users. It says just upload a photo using the image uploader below and have AI instantly create an Instagram caption for you with three relevant hashtags. It has a picture uploader element and the placeholder text I just wrote click to upload an image. This is an input box in Bubble. Once the user clicks it, it will bring up the file folders from their computer. They can select an image and upload it. We have a simple loader animation that tells the user the GPT is working in the background and to just hang tight. And then we have the caption results in a group at the bottom that will display for the user once the custom GPT has done its job. So this is how the full page looks. If you haven't created your OpenAI API call yet, go to plugins. You're going to install the API connector. Name your call OpenAI. I'm gonna expand this. You need two shared headers. Content dash type will be application slash JSON and the key authorization will be bearer space your secret key. To get your secret key, go to platform.openai.com. Hover over the left side, click API keys, click create new secret key. I'm gonna call this caption generator, click create secret key, copy the key, go back into bubble in your back end, and then paste it here. So bear space your secret key. You can always revoke a secret key if you're afraid it's been leaked on your API keys page. Go over here and click the delete button to revoke key and then revoke key. Next, we're gonna create a call called GPT Vision. In order for our custom GPT to look at images and what it contains, we need to use the GPT Vision model. So I like to call it GPT Vision. Let's hit expand. This call is an action. Make sure it's a post request and posting to this URL, api.openai.com slash version one slash chat slash completions. Here is the JSON body. I got this from the OpenAI documentation. And if you go to platform.openai.com slash docs, and then I'll scroll down to vision. And then in the quick start section, you can just copy this curl command. Remember, we already added the headers, so we only need the curl call down here. So you can copy that and paste it in here. In Bubble, when you have text in between two caret brackets, like you see here, text and image URL, that means the data is dynamic. The model up here is not dynamic because there are no caret brackets and it's not highlighted green. So we can't change this within our app. We can change these two fields within our app. And that's good because we want a unique prompt each time and we want a unique image URL each time. To initialize the API, you need to make a test call. So I simply went, what's in this image? And then I grabbed a random image from Wikipedia. I'm gonna hit reinitialize call. This is a successful call. I've decided to ignore all of these fields within Bubble because the only thing we need is the text. What is the message content that comes back? That's gonna be our caption. And in this sample call, I know it's tough to read, but it says this image shows a beautiful natural landscape with a wooden boardwalk. And if I copy this picture and paste it in, it got it correct. All right, now that the call is set up, we can start building out the feature. So back on the design page, I'm gonna go to workflows and we're gonna add an event and it's gonna be when an input's value is changed. Think of events like triggers. So when this value is changed, and it's the picture uploader. We are gonna make an API call. I'm gonna scroll down to plugins, open AI GPT vision. For the input text, I'm gonna write task. You will be shown an image. Create an Instagram caption for this image and include three relevant hashtags. For the image URL, I'm gonna write HTTPS colon because our URLs need to be formatted like that. We're gonna insert dynamic data click this picture uploaders value and then URL. 
Whenever someone uploads a picture to the picture uploader, Bubble automatically stores it in their S3 database and creates an image URL. We are grabbing that URL and posting it to GPT Vision. So that's our API call. Now we need to display it on the page. For that, I'm gonna create a custom state. So I'm gonna go back to design. Let's double click on the page. Let's click the I button, click add new custom state. We are going to call it caption and the state type is gonna be text. Hit create. Now back in workflow, our next action, we're gonna to go to element actions, set state, and the element is the page called caption. We are grabbing that caption state and then the value is gonna be the result of step one. That's our API call. Choices, first item, message content, and then I like to trim it to remove all empty space. I'm gonna go back to design. Now I can go down to the bottom text box here and we're just displaying dynamic data. We're displaying the pages state called caption. I know it's confusing because it says caption, caption, but if I change this page to caption testing, you would see the text now says caption testings caption. So it's grabbing the page first and then that custom state. All right, let's test it out. I'm gonna hit preview and all I have to do is upload an image. So I'm gonna click this. Let's choose this desert image, click open. And we can see the API call working because there's a black bar at the top of the page. And there we go, it shot out a caption. Chasing horizons in the heart of the desert. The silence here speaks louder than words. Hashtag desert vibes, hashtag adventure awaits, hashtag nature photography. Perfect, it's all working as expected. Let's clean it up a bit though. First, I don't wanna display this text box at the bottom of the page until we have a caption. So I'm gonna double click on it, go to layout, and then unselect this element is visible on page load. And instead we're gonna create a condition. And that condition is when the page caption, its custom state caption, when it's not empty, that is our when condition. Then we're gonna change a property characteristic this element is going to be visible. So when it's empty and it has no caption, this element will be invisible. And when it does have a caption, it has a result, it's gonna be shown on the page. Now I wanna show this loader when the API call is working. Just an extra visual element for our user when they're waiting on the page. So for that, I'm gonna double click on the page, go to our custom states again. I'm gonna add a new custom state. This one is gonna be called loading and the state type is going to be yes or no. Let's hit create. By default, the loading value is going to be no. And clicking on the loader, I'm gonna write a condition when the caption page, its loading state is yes, this element is visible. So when it's not loading, it will be hidden. When it's loading, it will be visible. Let's go to workflows. I'm gonna to click to add an action. We're gonna go element actions, set state, it's gonna be the caption page. The state's gonna be loading. We're gonna make it yes. And we're gonna move that to the beginning of the workflow. So as soon as someone uploads a picture, it's gonna set the state to loading. And then at the end of the workflow, we're gonna set another state. This time loading will go back to no. Okay, let's preview again. You can see the text box at the bottom is no longer there. We have no loading icon. I'm gonna upload an image. We'll do a picture of this deer. And there we go, we have a loading icon at the bottom and it shoots out our caption. Captivating nature's innocence, fawn fun, nature whimsy, creature cute. Very cool. Let's say we wanted to charge our users to use our custom GPT. The choice is yours, but I think a credit system might work well for this. So I'm gonna add a text at the top of the page and I'm gonna write credits colon. Let's put this zero for now. And I'm actually gonna move it above the title and align it all the way to the right. And then I'm gonna add a button. Let's write on this button, purchase credits. I'm gonna click this, hold shift, click credits, right click, group elements into a row container. Let's space them out a bit. Let's say 15 pixels in between. I'm going to center this credits portion and move it behind it. Then let's align everything to the right. There we go. Let's space it 10 pixels from the bottom. And then I'm gonna to go to plugins, click add plugins, make sure the stripe plugin is enabled. 
Make sure all your secret keys and publishable keys are in the appropriate boxes. And then we're gonna click on the purchase credits button. Let's go to add workflow, go to payments, charge the current user. For the amount, let's say 10 bucks. The name, I'll call it image caption credits. And then if that is successful, we need to top up the user's credits. So I'm gonna to go to data and then in the user data type, we're gonna create a new field and call that credits. That field type will be a number, hit create. By default, they're gonna have zero credits. Then I'll go to design and in the credits section, instead of zero here, I'm gonna insert dynamic data and it's gonna be the current user's credits. And then in workflows, after a successful payment, we are going to go data, make changes to a thing. We're gonna change the current user and then we're gonna to click to add a field. We're gonna change their credits to current users credits, just in case they already have some, plus let's say 50. Of course, you can make this way more complicated, offer many plans for many different purchase amounts, but for the simple workflow, we're gonna charge the user 10 bucks, and if that's successful, give them 50 credits. Now for the picture uploader's value is change trigger. We're only gonna allow this to happen when the current user's credits is greater than zero. So if they have no credits, they can't use the tool. And then at the end of the tool, we are going to data, make changes to a thing. We're gonna change the current user and then we're gonna change their credits equals current users credits minus one. So every time they use the tool, it takes away a credit. We can also do something like this. I can copy this, paste it in, and this time change it to when the current user's credits is zero. Of course, we're gonna delete all of these actions in the workflow. Instead, what we're gonna do is add an action. We're gonna go over to element actions, show an alert pop-up in browser, and we're gonna write, sorry, you don't have any credits left. Please purchase more by clicking the button below. Let's create a test user so we can test this out. I'm gonna to go to users, app data. We're gonna create a new entry. The email will be test at user.com. Credits, of course, are zero. Hit create. Let's hit run as. Now we're gonna to try to upload an image with zero credits. I'm gonna click this. I'll upload this illustration. And there we go, that's the error message. Sorry, you don't have any credits left. I'm gonna click okay. This time I'm gonna click purchase credits. It's gonna load the Stripe checkout. Here, $10. I'm gonna enter my card information and click pay. There we go, a successful payment. It now shows 50 credits. I'm gonna to click to upload an image. Here's me as Tony Soprano. And there we go, it's working now. We got the loading animation and a caption. And look at this, credits equals 49. Works perfectly. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, make even more complex GPTs into its own app that you can charge customers for, check out my online course. The link is in the description below. And if you like this video, I put two more on the page right now. One is my most recent upload and the other is the best suited for you. Give one of them a click and I'll see you in there. Peace.